Hello everybody, it's Fu here and today I've got a video that you will not want to miss because we are talking all about accuracy in Pokemon. We're looking at what is the least accurate move in the entirety of Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon and that's taking into account things like accuracy and evasion and any items and abilities that can affect that too. So it's actually not as simple a question as you might first have thought. Before we get into all the mechanics and good stuff, I'd like to ask you to maybe leave a like on this video if you do enjoy the content because it lets me know what you want to see more of and also helps the channel out at the same time. But if not, that's fine. So, in Pokemon, what determines whether a move hits or misses? There are actually a few things that can impact this and we'll talk about each of them separately. But first we've got the most important one which is the attack accuracy. And then you've got modifiers such as stat modifiers like accuracy and evasion stats. Then you have to consider any item effects and also abilities that can impact on accuracy and evasion. So first, the most important thing is the attack that you are going for. So most attacks have an accuracy value. Some don't because they may be targeting themselves, therefore you don't have to hit anything or it might be like a field effect. But most things where you're targeting a Pokemon, you'll have an accuracy stat. And most of the time that's 100, which means 100% of the time without any other modifiers you will hit. There are some moves that don't have an accuracy stat when you're targeting stuff and generally that's because they always hit so you don't actually have anything displayed there because you ignore any accuracy checks it always hits. Things like faint attack and shadow punch, those are examples of those kind of moves that don't have an accuracy stat but always hit. But then you've got the tricksy moves that have an accuracy stat below 100 that can miss. And this is what we'll be looking at today. So that can range from things that are very likely to hit but only infrequently miss, things like Air Slash, to things that apparently miss all the time, like Focus Blast. However, Focus Blast isn't the most inaccurate move, although it doesn't always feel like that when you're relying on the 70% accuracy to win the game. But there are much more inaccurate moves. Now, your mind might jump straight to things like one-hit KO moves because they are very inaccurate. And that's a really good place to start, actually, because they do have the lowest move accuracy in the game. So examples of things like this are Horn Drill, Guillotine, Fisher, and Sheer Cold. And the minimum accuracy they can have, their starting accuracy, is 30%. So that's really low, you're only you're going to be hitting less than one in three times. If your Pokemon is a higher level than the opponent's Pokemon, then actually your accuracy inc is increased. But that's not what we're considering today, we want to find the most inaccurate moves. I don't know why, it's just useless Pokemon trivia that you might want to know, but I, I, I like finding out these kind of things. So yeah, we're looking at the least accurate. So 30% seems like the baseline, but there's actually a little caveat to that because sheer cold doesn't quite function like the other one hit KO moves. If it's used by a non ice type, its accuracy is actually reduced further to 20%. So that is actually the lowest accuracy move of any in the game. However, that isn't the easy answer to our question because these moves aren't affected by accuracy modifiers, so they aren't affected if you boost your accuracy stat, they're not affected if the opponent's evasion stat is reduced, and they're not affected by any item or ability effects. The only ones that do work are no guard, that means you always hit. So, and that's not what we're looking at again because we want to miss, not hit. So the lowest accuracy you can get without modifiers is 20%. But other moves may well be able to have a lower accuracy than that because they're affected by all of these other modifiers. So we need to consider whether that's possible. So the lowest accuracy moves that are affected by modifiers have an accuracy of 50% and there are three of these such moves. The first one is Dynamic Punch. Second is Zap Cannon and the third is Inferno. All of these have a 100% effect chance of causing a status. But with that shaky 50% accuracy, they're very rarely used in battle unless you have a way to min mitigate that accuracy. For example, Machamp's No Guard Dynamic Punch that is infuriating to face because of that damn confusion. But these are really interesting moves and can lead to some interesting strategies when trying to use them to boost your accuracy, for example. 
So they start at base 50% accuracy. We need to now look at the other modifiers that can affect these moves to see if we can get below that base 20% accuracy for sheer cold. So the first modifier that we will check are stat modifiers, and this is, includes the accuracy and evasion stats. Each of these stats can be boosted or reduced by six levels. So if your opponent is at plus six evasion, they'll be very hard to hit. And if your accuracy is minus six, then you will be very, really struggling to hit the opponent at all. The actual modifier in these situations is at plus six evasion for your opponent or at minus six accuracy for you, you will only be hitting one in three times. But it's interesting to note that that is the minimum modifier that you can get. So for example, if your opponent is at plus six evasion, you have a one in three chance to hit them. But if they then reduce your accuracy to minus six, so it's minus six accuracy versus plus six of agent, you still have a one in three chance to hit them because that is the minimum that you can go to. So accuracy and evasion kind of work on a level system where as, as soon as you're six levels apart in accuracy and evasion, that is the that's the minimum that you can hit the opponent basically. So plus three evasion, minus three accuracy, you'll be hitting one in three times and you won't get any less accurate than that with stat modifiers. So that's it was an interesting thing that I didn't know going into this video just because you don't see accuracy and evasion used that much in competitive, evasion is banned in a lot of formats and accuracy uh, is mitigated easily by switching, but it's just an interesting thing to note. So that's where we're, we are with stat modifiers. We've got that one third modifier going there. So we'll move on to abilities next and see if abilities can affect chances to hit at all. So in terms of the target, there are some abilities that can increase the chance of the opponent missing you. And some obvious ones are weather-based abilities, so Snow Cloak and Sand Veil. When the relevant weather is up, the opponent's accuracy is reduced to 80% of its original value. So if they had 100% accuracy going into this attack and they have one of these weather abilities active, you'll be hitting them 80% of the time, four out of five times. However, if their accuracy is lower than that to start with, it will be even lower after taking into account these abilities. But there's a more potent evasion increasing ability, and that is Tangled Feet. So when your Pokemon is confused, its Tangled Feet will activate, and it means that incoming attacks will only hit 50% of the time, which is a crazy evasion modifier. And it kind of makes sense because this is much more situational and less controllable than, for example, setting up weather. Getting your Pokemon confused is not that easy, really. But dodging moves 50% of the time is mental. And so this is definitely the, the ability that we will be using to try to get the least accurate move possible. In terms of the attacker, there is also an ability that will reduce their accuracy and that's Hustle. It boosts their physical damage output while making their moves 80% as accurate as they were. So this is another ability that we'll be deploying to try to get the least accurate move possible. So those are abilities all summed up. And now we can move on to the final group of modifiers, which are items. So the target can definitely hold a really horrible and disgusting item to help it out, which is either Bright Powder or Lax Incense. These reduce the opponent's accuracy by a further 10%. So these can be really frustrating when paired with other evasion or accuracy tactics. In terms of the attacker, there actually aren't any items that will reduce their accuracy, which kind of makes sense because why would you give your Pokemon an item that reduces their accuracy? Having said that, obviously there are items like Sticky Barb that hurt your Pokemon. So that, I mean, that logic doesn't really hold, but still there are no items that reduce your accuracy. There are some that increase it, but that's not what we're looking at today. So now that we've talked about all the potential modifiers that we have, Let's move on to find out if we can make these 50% accurate attacks less accurate than sheer cold used by a non-ice type Pokemon. So let's look at the maths behind this to work out the accuracy of the least accurate move in the game. So we've got a 50% base accurate move to start with. We're looking at dynamic punch here. We then factor in the accuracy and evasion stat modifier. So the best modifier for this experiment will be reducing us to one third of our base accuracy. So that's going from 50% down to about 17% when we round up. So a 17% accurate move, we're already beating out sheer cold. 
We then take into account the abilities and that incredible Tangled Feet evasion boost will reduce our accuracy from 17% down to about 9% again rounding up. And then we've also got Hustle to take into account. So that reduces our accuracy to 80% of what it is at the moment. So that's going from 9% to about 8%. And then the last consideration we have to make is that Bright Powder item, which will take this to around about a 7% accurate move. So that is crazy. That's hitting like less than one in 10 times. That is so inaccurate and definitely the least accurate move in the game, including one hit KO moves. It's actually gonna be Dynamic Punch, Zap Cannon, or Inferno. So I thought you guys might like to see this in action and to see whether we can hit the least accurate move in the game. And to do that, I've got a bit of setup to do. So we've got Spinder that's going to be going for that Dynamic Punch. I thought it was probably a bit apt to have a very drunk looking Pokemon try to hit a Dynamic Punch. And we've got it going up against a Durant. Durant has the Hustle ability, so what we're going to be doing is with Durant, we're going to be boosting up its evasion and also reducing Spinder's accuracy, while Spinder skill swaps to get the Hustle ability to reduce its own accuracy for its Dynamic Punch while giving Durant the Tangled Feet ability. Now for this experiment, I actually did want to go to plus six evasion and minus six accuracy, even though as I already explained, you would only really need to go to plus three, minus three, or just plus six evasion, for example. Um, but I wanted to make sure that we're looking at the least accurate move in the game, so I felt like it was appropriate for this experiment. So once Durant has done all of that setting up, I also thought I would trick with Spinder so that you guys could see that the Durant is holding the Bright Powder. And then on the final turn, Spinder is gonna go for the Teeter Dance, which is gonna confuse the Durant, making sure that it's Tangled Feet then activates, giving it that incredible evasion boost. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go for the Dynamic Punch with Spinder and see if it hits. Yeah, it didn't hit any of the eight times I tried. It didn't hit, which is kind of good. It's kind of like proof of the concept, but Hawkeye just not hitting this one, I'm afraid. So that is all that we are covering today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Let me know in the comment section if you think that I missed any important modifiers that could have changed the outcome of this video. I'd be really interested to know if you guys know anything that I don't know or I didn't come up with in my research. But that is gonna be all for today. Please stay tuned for future videos. Thanks so much for watching. I've been Fu, you've been awesome, and hopefully see you next time. Goodbye.